two names under Corey's um, title, Ann Box and Corey. Um, and that's because she's also partnering with her mother, um, Ann. Her mother's name is Ann, and she, her mother might jump in here and say hello. Uh, but Corey will be presenting today, and I was just talking to her. She actually has her PhD in music, which I think is so cool. And I was sharing how I also come from a musical family, as my dad was a professional musician, um, and how I love music of all kinds, I think, because it's always been kind of woven into our um, kind of our family. Uh, and I have a lot of musical talent in our families. I wish I could say it was me. It's not. <laughs> Uh, but it doesn't mean I don't appreciate it. I always have music on um, in the background. Um, I, my my children, same thing. They they love music and uh, musicals and yeah, opera, everything. So it's it's kind of cool that you have your PhD in music yet you're in the financial industry, which actually goes hand in hand many times. I don't know if you're aware of that. Maybe you are that you know the numbers and music are very aligned with financials. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, well, you know, I think um, music is, you know, it's the universal language and it's part yeah. of all of us. Artists always need patrons, <laughs> yeah. all sides of your brain. And in finances, I feel like you also use all sides of your brain, especially working yeah. with people. You're going to use your creative side, but then also your analytical side. So you're going to use both mm -hmm. sides of your brain in this business too. So yeah. Uh, like think of creative ideas to help people, but then also, okay, now what do the numbers say? So um, anyway, that's so cool. You, you know, performers are nothing without patrons. So <laughs> we need yeah, it. Yeah, great. and I'm so glad that now that we're open and mm -hmm. Broadway's back and everybody's coming out of the woodworks mm -hmm. and they're so excited to, to see the talent again. Um, I know a lot of it went virtual and online, which was super cool. Uh, but yeah, it's it's great. I love music, and I, I love that you play the piano because that's my favorite instrument. Um, <laughs> I'll tell my sister Taylor sometimes, "Come over and play a song for me," or my sister mm -hmm. Julie, "Play a song for me so I can hear the music." <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's funny when I see um, musicians. I love to watch their fingers on the keyboard. I think that's fascinating. So yeah, just insights. Yeah. But um, today we're talking financial. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to welcome everyone out in our Facebook group to Purse Strings, where we provide free online tools and resources so that women have a one-stop shop, a place to go to, to learn with whatever they need to know. They have a question about thinking about buying a house, thinking about getting married, you know, I'm getting closer to retirement and need to really deep dive, look at my monies to know how I'm going to survive, whatever it might be. <laughs> Um, you know, I have, you know, like Maggie, I have, don't own anything. I have a little bit oh. of that, but, um, you know, yeah. like different age ranges, we have different uh, financial challenges. Uh, but so Purse Strings also provides skilled financial professionals like Corey, um, who are there to help women make smart financial decisions and work in partnership with them so that they can live a life that's financially fearless. Uh, we search for or only have referrals of those financial professionals, whether they're realtors or financial advisors or insurance professionals, attorneys, uh, lenders. Anytime a woman has to make a substantial financial decision, we want to make sure we have the right professionals she can access and have on her financial team here at Her Strength. That's great. You're going to go on mute because you got drilling in the background. I do. Sorry about that. Um, all right. Well, we're so excited to have you on today, Corey. Um, I'm going to give um, I'll give a little intro to you and then let you get started. Um, so like we talked about, Corey has her PhD in music education. Um, and then she realized educating individuals and business owners about their financial health would make a bigger impact on people's lives. But music does make a big impact. Mm -hmm. It's true. Um, she'll help you plan today that will make an impact of tomorrow. Um, she likes to share and knowledge that um, she wished that she knew 20 years ago um, and 20 years from now, you'll be glad that that, you know. Um, so either, you know, for your family, your first home, you're trying to build a business. Um, she can help you reach those dreams. Um, so with that, Corey, I'll give you the floor. Thank you. And thank you so much, Barbara and Maggie, for bringing me on. I really appreciate the opportunity. 
Um, and women and money. There are numerous books with a lot of statistics about aspects of women and finance. And, you know, they say on the negative side, women are less confident about money decisions and the income gap. Um, women make better investors. Uh, so that's on the positive side. Women make better investors. Yet all the statistics don't really tell us a story about the women behind the statistics. So if you want to go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, the stories be told below are composites. So I'm going to be telling you stories that are composites. They're not the actual stories. I've blended stories from people I know or clients so to protect their privacy. But all of the women are amazing. They have big hearts and they work hard every day to make a difference. They're beautiful. They're brilliant. They're smart. Why do they have anxiety about money? And what can they do to keep their anxiety to keep from being anxious so that they can say, I have a little money on my own. I will be okay. I got this. Now let's first talk about Maria. Maria is a woman in her seventies. Her husband passed away a few years ago and her husband was a doctor. He built up a good nest egg. She has a nice home. He built up, a she has a million dollars in the bank and yet, or a million dollars in her investment products. And yet she's still lying awake at night, wondering and anxious about running out of money or her daughter running out of money. So, so Maria, she goes to her financial professional and she has her financial professional tell her over and over different ways until she finally, she gets it. And I think what I want to tell Maria is, Maria, you got this. You can do this. Your husband worked all those years. You were working too, by the way. I was going through this and my husband said, well, she was working at home too. She was working just as hard. So I was appreciative of my husband for validating that, you know, just because you're not earning money, earning monetary value, you are you are contributing to the family because if you are at home, whether you're a man or wife, whoever staying at home, you are, you know, taking care of the home, making sure you have food, making sure you're there when the repair guys come, helping out around the house. I mean, it's, it's a full time job. So you're earning money, just not it doesn't there's no transaction. But anyway, you're smart enough to do this, Maria, you got this. And you can understand the products that your husband chose. You can understand how they work and how they benefit you. You, for some people, knowledge is power, but for you, knowledge means security. It means you can rest easy when you go to sleep at night. So Maria, you got this. Our next woman that I want to talk about is Linda. Linda is a woman in her 40s. She and her husband have five children. The oldest is in high school and the youngest is an active toddler. Linda's children are all unique and wonderful. But they keep her busy. They keep her running. And Linda's husband works as a project manager. He works long hours and he has just enough time to come have a little dinner and help get the kids to bed. Now, Linda is spending more of the money and she enjoys finding good deals. So she actually takes care of most of their daily budgeting. And Linda was an interior designer in her past life. And she's been preoccupied, though, with raising children and doing all that, remodeling their house. And now that the kids, though, are starting to go to school, she thinks, well, maybe I can do something else. Maybe I can start rebuilding my business as an interior designer. And but should this even be a goal? I mean, don't her children aren't her children more than money? And aren't there isn't there, you know, people are important and people are more important than money. But she has a big heart and there could be some ways. Could there be some ways that she could help her family and then have some left over to contribute to the projects and the people and the organizations that she cares about. And what I want to say to Linda is, Linda, you got this. 
Um, you are amazing at finding a good deal and not spending unnecessary money and you have a great start. But one thing I wish everyone could see is in the power of investing and the power of money over time. So yes, there is so much value in time with your kids and your family. You can't get that time back. And so that's why money has value also, and that can grow over time. So once it is gone, it is gone. The time is gone. You cannot get the time value of money back. And the interest rate you get makes a huge difference. And so if you want to maximize your money, then you need to look at the interest rate that you're getting. So let's take this for instance. Look at the top. Let's say we put $10,000 in the bank. And then we have uh, over 20 years. If you look in the black, it's that the 0.5 interest rate, that's what you're going to get at the bank usually. In 20 years, you have $11,000. Well, that was about $1,000 profit. It's okay. I mean, you know, all right. But then if you only had 2% in it, if you go on the red, if you look at the red, 2% is what they would give me when I was teaching. It's what they would give me as part of my annuity pension plan, 2%. And I would get a little bit more, 14,000 or almost 15,000. But then if you go to some other products at 4%, I would get 22,000, that's double. And 4% is still like some of the bond funds. It's still pretty conservatively, pretty still pretty conservative. And then at 6%, if you can get that, some of the products, if they, they can um, ensure a 6% increase, then that would be 30, 3%, three times more than I would have gotten just leaving in the bank, just leaving it in the bank. So, and you can get maybe even something if you get 10%, then you would have 73,000. Now, anything that can guarantee you 10%, 15% or 20% may not work. It could happen. A volatile market like this year means people made money. So some people in the past year have made it but you, there is no crystal ball. We cannot guarantee the future. This past year, it taught us that if nothing else. But, you know, you can be brave though. You can look at the interest rates and you can face the challenge of interest rates and come out on top. Think of it this way. Interest rates can be interesting. They don't whine or talk back to you. They don't require you to work hard. They make your money work harder for you. How hard do you want your money to work? Do you want your $10,000 to make you $1,000 or $23,000? It's really up to you. Now you say, I don't have $10,000. Well, if you can figure out a way to just get $200 a month, look at the power of saving consistently over time. So if you have $200, if you look in the black over 20 years, $200 a month will get you $50,000. 2% a month will get you $59,000. If you can get 6%, which is still a moderate, it's still a, things that are giving you 6% are still fair, fairly you know, reasonable investments. You'll get 93,000. So would you rather have 50,000 or would you have 93,000 in 20 years? Which one gives you the better return without doing any extra work? You just have to take the jump and learn about and put it in the product that is going to give you the best interest rate over time. So these little things like interest rates, they matter. Extra money later on will give you choices, choices for you and for your family. Choices to help the world in a better place in ways that you think is important. And yes, you need to take care of your family and you and your, your uh, partner or spouse or whoever you're doing life with, you need to take care of the family because no one else is gonna take care of your family better than you. And yet, if you can take care of your family and then have a little bit left over for uh, to invest in projects and nonprofit organizations and, and, and help solve some problems that you believe in, you can leave a legacy that will live on long after you. 
So just think about that. Investing in just a different interest rate will give you the power to make different choices later on that matter to you. Now let's talk about Christy. Christy is a woman in her 30s. She has three children and is divorced and has had to rebuild her life from scratch. And during when she was separated from her husband, her husband had knew how to do all of the money, everything online, her husband knew how to do. So she didn't know how to do online banking. She had to hire a forensic accountant to find accounts for the divorce proceedings. She had to learn everything from scratch. So not only did she lose her spouse, her best friend, her everything, she lost her house. She lost some of the friends that she cared about. And she lost the security of knowing what was going on with uh, that she was taking care of. And so she's a sensitive person and she uh, got her degree in music therapy and her with the family support. She was she's going on. She's rebuilding her life. But now that she's kind of got things going, she's wondering, well, what do I do about these finances? She doesn't have somebody else that she can talk to about it and bounce ideas off of that is responsible for their family. So she, what about our 401k? Do interest rates really matter? She needs to talk to Linda, by the way. Um, you know, should I get life insurance? How much should I get? Should I get it just for, you know, taking care of the kids if something happened? Or should I get life insurance as investing? What, you know, what are the choices and how do I decide what to do about allocating all of the money and, and taking care of all that? Well, what I would say to Christy is you are smart and beautiful and you have been working very hard at the grind of carting kids around. And I know that is seems like you are going through a fog right now, but one baby step at a time, learning how to do the online banking, then going from there and every day a new baby step. And to help you, I would say, look at the pyramid. Now you'll see a lot of these pyramids, they're common in financial planning. Um, you'll see a lot of different versions. I made my own version based loosely on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, where I know a lot of the pyramids, they talk about the insurance protection and all of that as the bottom. But I think for a lot of women, survival is first, okay? Let's food, housing, care, basic needs. Let's make sure we have a house over our head and we're not gonna starve and we can buy gas to go to buy gas to go where we need to go. So survival is first. And a lot of times, you know, the courts or other people will make sure that you have survival, but what about more than survival? What about thriving and growing? So anyway, we have the survival on the bottom and then the next level is safety first. That's where you'll have your insurance protection. If you want to be able to write a check on things, but still have things grow a little bit, you could put things in a money market funds, anything like T-bills or bonds. This would also be a more quote unquote safe investment. Um, sometimes bonds are more in a growth thing, but you have to just look at the different products and see what would make the most sense. Um, then the next step is growth where you're trying to grow wealth. If you have, if you've taken care of the survival and you've taken care of your insurance protection on your money, then now you're ready to grow. So that's where you would get, you would invest in some mutual funds, your own business. If you have your own business, um, blue chip stocks, real estates, et cetera. The really risky one is at the top, you know, be art, penny stocks, collectibles, you know, a lot of times people may or may not invest in the more risky things. It just depends on the person um, and depends on how much they have left over. And this is the typical financial pyramid. It survivals on the bottom. But this pyramid is only a start. The problem with this pyramid in a high, in a high inflation market is that the inflation right now for all index, the last time I looked, it was over 4%. And the problem with that is that the cost for your food, housing, and basic care needs is going up. And the amount of return you're gonna get on your, on your insurance protection or even on your mutual funds 
the the power of the money, the power of the dollar is going down. So your dollar that you're getting from that. So it used to be. Uh, so as an example, I talked with a couple and about 20 years ago, they got hundred thousand dollar life insurance policy and they thought, oh, this is going to be enough for our retirement. And you all know a hundred thousand dollars is nothing to live on in retirement. It's just, it's just going to go really fast. So, you know, the things cost more, housing costs more, gas costs more. And so then you don't, you don't have as much to invest and then you don't have your, the money that you're getting from investing is not going to buy as much. So that's a problem. So, is this uh, inflation still work where you have safety first on the bottom? Um, is is getting so if you're getting a uh, if you're getting a point if you say, OK, I'm just going to leave it at the bank, you're getting what? 0.5 percent at the bank. Well, if inflation is 4 percent, then you're losing 3 percent of your money all the time. 3 percent of buying power of your money. That's going to be a problem. So what I would say to Christy is you got this. You can do your homework. You can interview different people. You can find the person that can help you build this problem. Find someone who can be there for you and your children. So not just someone who's going to be there and then leave next year. Not someone who's just kind of uh, in and out. I'm going to make my money and leave the business. Find someone who's going to stay the course and be your family advisor throughout the years. And Find someone who will watch out for you and make sure that you get the best return on your investment. You got this today and tomorrow. It's scary out there. It's scary as hell. But by the grace of God, you got this. For all the women of the world, old and young, tall or short, married or single, all the women, you got this. The statistics say that, oh, they say all these things about that we have to wait a long time, that we have to look at all the options, that we're more hesitant to ju jump in. But they also say that women are better investors. And is it so wrong to make sure, look at the long-term consequences of whatever choice you're making? No, wanting security on your investments, is that so wrong? No. So yes, hedge your bets, but believe in yourself that at the end of the day, you got this. So anyway, that's what I had to share. And are there any questions? That was great, Corey. Um, I feel so inspired. Um, yes, we'd love anyone to write in any questions they may have, um, but there are a couple um, points I just wanted to touch on. Um, I love you know the, the point at the end about how women are actually better investors because um, we do think think things through, you know, and we don't, you know, one thing we always say is we don't always buy in one purchase. We go home, we like to think about it, you know, then we come back to a person and, you know, tell them what we're going to do. Um, you know, it's not just always this, yep, that works. We're all about, you know, we think about our family, our husbands, you know, if our kids, everybody is getting supported if we passed, you know, it's never, it's never the woman first. I mean, typically. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, it, it's just interesting and in how we do have to set up, set up, come up to the table. Wow. And, um, you know, and, and learn and we can do it, you know, it's great. Um, let me see what questions. Yeah, and, and not only that we can do it, but statistics show, and I, I can get the statistics. So it's just a quick search on the inter internet. Um, like there's tons of statistics about not only can we do it, but we're better at it. Mm -hmm. We're better at seeing the value in companies. We're better at learning about those things. And I'm, you know, it's, it's only us who are believing in ourselves to that. Oh no, we can do this. <laughs> And you're absolutely right. Um, 
And there's so many more options that even go past that. I know this is a whole different topic, but like we did this one about social responsibility mm -hmm. and it was so interesting that all the money that you're investing are helping the community. Like you can pick where they're going and help the community build fresher water or make more fresh water, whatever it may be, you know? And so it's like, while well, you don't have that money and it's making more money. You're also helping the community. Just like, yeah, why, why not? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you just have to know your options and come to the table, which is great. Um, so if you were to give, you know, one, one tip to get started, what would that be? Um, well, first, I mean, you're going to look at the bottom of your pyramid. If mm -hmm. all of your money if, is going, if, if you're living check to check, which, you know, we've all been there. So if you're leaving, living from paycheck to paycheck, then you're just taking care of the bottom of the pyramid. You mm -hmm. can't really go up. So I would say, you know, see if there's a way you can either, you know, it's it's all about the balance sheet, all, you know, assets, liabilities. So if you're if you're but if you're living paycheck to paycheck, then those are about even. Mm -hmm. So but that's not going to give you a cushion. And that's when you get into trouble with you say, well, OK, I don't have it. I got to pay on the credit card. So but you got that. So try to, you know, you may have to do a little extra jobs or see if you can get a better deal on something get pay less for this to get a better deal on this. And then, you know, if you have children, you, you know, you're going to have to take care of then safety first. You're going to have to start with, you know, let's try a term life insurance policy. If you can get permanent, that's better, but you can't always afford it right away. So you could get like a term policy that could be then convertible to, per, to permanent later, which is great because then you don't have any extra underwriting. So, you know, so just baby steps, you know, mm -hmm. try to get the term and then try to see how much you have left over. Now, if you, the other thing I would say is if you do an extra side business, a lot of women do that, you know, they'll, you know, sell something or they'll provide extra services. You always got to have a little extra side gig. And the trick about that is have that go into a separate account. So you don't even see it and have that go now. And one way to start investing easy, like for the $200 a month or $400 a month is to put that in a separate um, mute, either a mutual fund account or brokerage mm -hmm. account. Then you want to try to find a mutual fund that, that doesn't have a ton of fees and you want to find one that has a really good quality money manager. And so you're going to need to talk to a financial advisor about looking at that type of stuff to make sure, you know, it's not a ton of fees. It's not, it's a really good money manager, but put that in some kind of mutual fund or brokerage account so that sometimes you can even do it so that you can actually write checks on that account. So if you need the money, you can get it within seven days or within sometimes even now with all the electronic things they have, you can get the money instantly. It just depends on how you're setting it up. So the main thing right now is don't think of the savings in the bank as actually doing anything for you because right now people are bleeding money. And if you didn't know that, you know that because every time you go to the grocery store, it costs more and more and more. Definitely been feeling that one for sure. Um, it's definitely going up. We're seeing the gas prices go up and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so if you're not investing aggressively, actually, I talked to a guy today and he was, he was satisfied with his little 4% he was getting and I just thought three or 4% he was getting with whatever he was doing. And he was just happy as a lark. And I thought, well, that's okay because you're just breaking even. Yeah. You're like, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, what they say is if you're not making money and then you're not, uh, if you're not uh, growing money, you, you, it might be quote unquote safe, but you're not making any money. So mm -hmm. it's really so safe. Exactly. Um, and so then if someone called and worked with you, what would you help them with? Well, first of all, I just, we spend more time talking about why the, how there's, there's like thousands of, there's thousands of options. So the, how is that's the easy part is how, what we focus more about is the why. Why are you doing this? Who do you need to take care of? And what do you want out of this at the end of the day? And when we talk about, and that's something people can do at home and think about before they even talk to anybody. What do I really want to be in 20 years? Where do, where do we need to go? Who do I need to take care of? Um, and I would say at the end of the day to dream bigger than you think. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I keep harping on it. But 
you know, I know people want to take care of themselves and their families and they want to know they're taken care of. And that's great and beautiful. But if you do the same amount of paperwork, but you just choose different options, there are some great um, options that can give people the, the comfort they need to know they're taken care of. And yet, if you have a little left over at the top, you can do some amazing things in the world. So a lot of the nonprofit organizations are having a hard time because they're always, people just are not giving as much as they, they could. And, you know, you can either give it to Uncle Sam or you can give it to the charity of your choice. Mm -hmm. Personally, I think, you know, if we can make a little extra and then you have a little extra to give to the charity or the nonprofit of your choice, you can have say in solving some of our problems. Because we have a lot of problems right now, yeah. but you can have a voice in saying what you want. And I think that's just the power of let's let's take care of the people in front of us. Yes, definitely. We always need to do that. Um, but then where do we want to go from here? So I'd say right. mostly we focus on the what and the why and the who and the how that's just that that just comes. But we can't do any of the how until we know these bigger questions. Makes a lot of sense. Um, and then, you know, I know I know it's always a range or it depends, but what would be the average kind of price or how is it priced working with um, you or your mom or something like that? Well, we we don't charge for advice. Um, if people do investments or a new business with us, there is, you know, some commission that we that is commission and fees that we charge. If they do business with us, there is some commission on it. It's normal commission that people get depending upon what right. product they get. But we can do, you know, years ago and um, my mom and did a financial plan uh, for someone when she was working at a different company. And she printed out, it was a big book. And she said, but it was only about two pages about the client. And so she says, well, if people want to pay $1,500, I'll print them out a big book. <laughs> but, you know, I'd rather, we would rather put that $1,500 to work for you. Let's put it in the bank or, or put it in the, the product that you want to do and, or let's put it invested or whatever you want to do. So let's put that money to work for you. Uh, you know, we can write your fine. You want a financial plan? Great. We'll write it on a napkin. We'll get your financial plan in like 15 minutes. It's not that hard. So that's something that we don't understand because and always not everybody wants a big, full financial plan. Sometimes they just need a little piece of something or a CPA will come to us and they just need us to do a little piece in the plan. So it just doesn't make sense. We're we're happy with our little commission that we get and our clients are happy because they're making money. So they don't mind giving us a little piece because they're growing. So of course, no, I mean, we always believe everyone needs to have their commission um, by all means. They are the professional, mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's always, nobody talks about it sometimes. So you're like, well, how much am I getting into? Like is talking to her going to be 500 bucks or is it mm -hmm. 50? You know, people never, it's never talked about. So, you know, bringing the numbers in really helps, which we appreciate that. Um, so, you know, even just some assistance or some questions sounds like mm -hmm. it'd be free or, you know, you could help with some direction of where to go next, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, we really see it as a ministry. My dad was a pastor. And so we just really see what we're doing as a ministry. Uh, we're able to help people. Um, if we can make a living in the process, great. But, you know, um, you know, we have, you know, we've been doing this. Uh, my mom, Anne, has been doing this since 1987. So she has a lot of history with it. And she's just like, you know what? I'm not going to do a whole big book when only two pages are about the client. So I love that. That's great. How um, empowering your message was about women in any situation or any stage of life, you know, they are all dealing with different constraints or different worries, but for, at the end of the day, they got this. Um, and moreover, once they start learn a little bit, start learning a little bit about the difference in compounding interest and how one percent, two percent, three percent more can really empower them. Just making just that aha and making a difference and saying instead of this investment, let's do that. And the the understanding of inflation versus the impact on your savings. 
that concept in itself is very powerful mm -hmm. um, in the decisions they make. So that was a great share. I appreciate that. Um, and yeah, I, we always say, Megan, and I say, you know, working with a financial provider is like working with any other professional that you work with that you have no qualms about paying your dentist, your doctor, um, other professionals. We all deserve to earn a good living because we've invested so much of our own time, money um, and schooling and learning what we need to do what we need to know and we are the expert so um yeah I, I loved your message it was um empowering and it's exactly the message we want to send with purse strings so thank you well thank you for the opportunity of bringing on it's so wonderful to have women who are like mine and just helping mm -hmm. people ed just educate on giving people the financial education that you know and it's funny to me that we hold ourselves back so you know mm -hmm. it's like, people say to me, oh, well, I let, let someone else take care of that for me, or I don't really, I'm like, hello. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's your power. You yeah. got this. You just, just do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Money's your power. So mm -hmm. great. Well, we really appreciate you coming on, Corey. Um, you can always reach out to Corey at Adaption Financial. Um, she is one of our Purse Strings approved providers. So you can check her out on the Purse Strings website. Um, her email is also at the bottom here. And then tomorrow we will have the handout with an overview of this presentation. But if I were to take away one overview right now, it'd be that you got this. <laughs> got this. Yay. Thank, Thank you so much, so Corey. Much. We'll talk Thank later. You, Corey. Right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.